At CES, there were several RGX laptops, and they were indeed very compelling. Some new designs, and it does make you want to put your hand in your pocket and uh, splash out and get a new laptop. But are they actually worth getting? Let's take a look. You may be in one of two camps. You may already have a gaming laptop, in which case you want to sell that and uh, buy one of the new ones. Um, but depending on what you've already got, is that upgrade worthwhile? Um, or you may not have a laptop at all and you may be deciding, you know, do I go for the latest generation, be future proof, or uh, perhaps go for a cheaper model from the previous generation. And certainly these RTX laptops aren't coming cheap. The uh, 2060 model is around about $1,500 to $1,800 and uh, the 2070 max q about 2000 to 2400 dollars some of the rtx 2070 models at 2000 dollars look quite decent value but they do go all the way up to about 2700 and the rtx 2080s you know touch at the 3000 dollar plus mark if you got like the 1060 like i looked at the walmart uh, op laptop you're, you're, you're there you're looking at a thousand dollars and generally you're looking at to say about 1200 dollars max so you do get some good value on those previous generations and prices may well come down i was actually doing some tests using my desktop rtx 2080 in my uh, desktop and comparing it against the uh, alienware amplify and an external thunderbolt uh, egpu solution and once i was doing that i did wonder how they would compare to uh, you know to the downstream cards so the 2080 i mean the 2070s the 2060s uh, you know in, t in laptops so basically what I did, I looked at, was these are the the cards and the shaders they have and their max boost clocks. So we have the desktop RTX 2080 with uh, you know 2,944 shaders with a max boost clock of 1,710 megahertz, and the the notebook one is um, has the same number of shaders, but to save you know because it's lower power, they reduce the clock weight as well. And as you can see, the 2080 Max Q, there's two variants. Uh, there's the 90 watt and 80 watt one and uh, t they take a huge drop in clock rate and uh, you know it's easy then to correlate what the percentage difference um, of frame rate would be based on the clock rate uh, very easy to do and then the, 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 the of course you've got the 2070 uh, regular one the notebook there less shaders quite a lot less shaders but compensated with a fairly higher boost clock and the uh, the 2070 max q again Two different versions, a 90 watt and 80 watt. Same number of shaders as the regular notebook one there, of course. But again, to save power, the clock rate drops down a lot. So if you're going for a Max Q one, you've got to, you know, do your homework and see if it has the 90 watt or 80 watt uh, configuration. From what I understand, a lot of them are going to have the 80 watt one. And of course, then we've got the uh, RTX 2060 notebook, um, which uh, has uh, 1920 shaders and 1200 boost clock now compare that to the uh, uh the gtx 1060 um notebook up a boat book there but it's a notebook um we got uh 12 8 that has 1280 shaders you know versus 1920 so it has a lot more shaders but the max boost clock is considerably less and that uh, generally works out you know assuming everything works the same you know the same ipc you're probably looking around about nine percent difference there in favor of the rtx and uh, if you look at the 2070 uh, max q no if you, know, if you just look at the 10 gtx 1070 uh, notebook regular one against the, this one here the rtx you got two, uh, 2304 shaders versus uh, 2048 um and the uh, clock rate 1645 for the gtx versus only 1440 and that actually works out to be about the same so there doesn't seem to be any benefit at all there so basically if you look at notebook check they have some great statistics here testing a lot a lot of games and they you know a lot, a lot of graphics cards so for example they tested the uh, rtx 2080 desktop say a monster hunter world and you can quite easily see what percentage difference in um, they say the GTX 1080 laptop would be in this case it's 32 percent so what I did I went through about five or six different games getting that information and averaged it all out and then I did the same from that uh, GTX 1080 laptop to 
look, configure what it would be for all the, the remaining in the GTX 10 series. So this is the information I've got. So for example, if you have 100, 100 FPS for the RTX 2080 desktop, um, this information would be here. And I'll, I'll include this Excel sheet in the description there. If I change that to 90, for instance, all the numbers change. Now, of course, you know, bear in mind that this is not going to be 100%, but it should give you a good idea. Certainly, these should be pretty accurate. They're just basically based off the, the number of shaders and, and, and the boost clock. And uh, of course, uh, of course, then of course I correlated the 2080 to the, to the 1080 here, and then did the same here with the shaders and boost clock to calculate these. And from what you can certainly see, if you've got a GTX 1060 laptop, um, in this case you've got 42 FPS here, compared to about 39 <clears throat> for the 2060 notebook. Now, of course, you know we said that should be around about 9% in favour of the perhaps the 2060 notebook, or you know if everything should go as planned. But still, if that is the case, add an extra 10% onto this, extra four frames per second, you're not going to be that much different. It's going to be, you know, it's, you can overclock the 1060 notebook and be in spitting distance of the 2060. So that, you know, for the extra premium there, it may not be all that worthwhile. Um, so if you, uh, but I think what they're looking at NVIDIA's targeting here are the people, uh, if you're looking at the thin and light laptops, for instance, you typically would be going for the 1070 Max-Q with 53 FPS and then uh, going for the RTX 2080 Max-Q. Uh, but if you go for the 80 watt one, you're going to get a pop, say, you know, a 10% uh, improvement. Um, but it's, again, not that much when you consider you can overclock the 1070 Max-Q. Um, but if you do get the 90 watt uh, part, then you do get a benefit. Indeed, you definitely do. Now, be careful if you uh, then if you're going for a 1070 Max Q, you had one of those, um, or you're thinking you might get one of those, and you think, oh, you know, what, I'll save some money, go for the 2070 Max Q. <clears throat> you're not going to see much difference, even with the 90 watt part. It's going to be pretty similar, isn't it? You know, without a doubt, there's not going to be much benefit there. So, given the choice, you should go for the 2080 Max Q. Now, of course, some of the Good benefit would be the uh, the full powered 2080 notebooks, you know, in a thick 17 inch chassis. That's probably where you know you're going to get some decent performance gain compared to the 10 regular GTX 1080 here. You know, 71 to 84. So you're going to get a nice, nice different, nice improvement there, and that could be worth looking at uh, for sure. Now I do have a couple of uh, RTX laptops coming in over the next uh, month or so and um, so uh, you know subscribe if you're not already uh, subscribed to my channel to make sure you don't miss out on any of the testing and the footage that i'll put out thank you bye